those taking the action. Basically, guilty before proven innocent. The European Union deems this principle an actual law, while the United States has labeled it a precautionary approach and uses it to create policy. The genesis of Agenda 21 begins with the Brundtland Commission's Our Common Future, reported to the United Nations in 1987. This report defined the term sustainable development, stated as development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of the future generations to meet their own needs. In order to define what these needs of the present are and what to implement in order to scale down daily aspects of human activity, Maurice Strong developed Agenda 21 and presented it at the Rio Earth Summit in 1992. Climate change affects the very future of life on Earth. We have to remember that life as we know it on Earth has only existed for a very small portion of the Earth's history and within very narrow parameters. And we are changing those parameters. So life is actually in danger. The four sections of 40 chapters of Agenda 21 leave no stone unturned when it comes to absolute control of humanity. It places nature above mankind and calls for an end to national sovereignty. The abolition of private property, the restructuring of the family, and restrictions on transportation and individual opportunity. This map clearly shows the human settlement zones according to Agenda 21 planned for the near future. Red is off limits, yellow is highly regulated, and green is normal use. President Clinton issued Executive Order Number 12852, creating the President's Council on Sustainable Development. The PCSD has eroded the foundation of U.S. public policy according to the master plan of the United Nations ever since. We are talking about a globalist plan that remakes your city to a specific model. This is not only in the United States, it's all across the United States and all across the world. And you'll see these plans. They are, um, they're called One Bay Area. They're called Four States, One Vision. They often have the, the word vision in them, or they might be your city 2050 or your city 2035. They're planning out to uh, 2050. This is the planning, you know, what we're looking at is a planning revolution here. And it's a totalitarian plan that they're implementing. I want to let people know that totalitarian plans all share every totalitarian plan, whether it was under Stalin or Hitler or Mao, they all share the same elements. And you will recognize it here in your country, wherever you live, you'll see that there's being a takeover and a total control of all land use, of your educational system, of means of production, your, all of your resources, okay? Also, you'll see it's all for the common good. It's all for the fatherland. It's all for the homeland. It's all for everyone's good, right? The individual will lose against this. Um, you see the scarcity mentality. Oh, there's not enough. You have to restrict yourself. You have to conserve. You know, am I a pig? Do I want to use everything up? No, but we're talking about uh, this is a totalitarian uh, well, this is about them controlling who they dole it out to. This is about right. them setting the standards of uh, your light bulb, your toilet, your parking space, your roads, destroying your roads, and they admit to shut you down to make you poor so they can control you. They all brag about it. And of course, the green totalitarian movement continues with Barack Obama. And I'm looking right here, uh, it says that in 2010, Obama raised $250 million in order to brainwash school children with public-private partnership propaganda. We want to thank Mr. Alshire for his comments on his client's predicament. Uh, Mr. Alshire, like many of you out there, was unaware of the local domino effect that uh, is related to Agenda 21. And that brings us to our quote of the day. We may get to the point where the only way of saving the world will be for industrial civilization to collapse. And that was globalist Maurice Strong. 
Hey, now we're going to turn to the InfoWars Nightly News Reporter Contest, where let me tell you something, folks, the entries are pouring in by the day. They're looking better by the day as well. Don't forget that this is your chance to crash through the lies and disinformation and propaganda of the globalist. There's also $10,000 in prizes and your chance to become part of the InfoWars team right here in Austin, Texas. The contest rules are located at InfoWars.com forward slash reporter dash contest. And coming up during our break, we're actually gonna show some of the clips from a few of the entries of uh, this competition as it is certainly starting to heat up. It is 1776 worldwide. We're gonna go to break and when we come back, Dr. Laura Presley in the house. And we're gonna talk about, well, removing the fluoridation of the water supply of our nation when we come back right after this. Stick around. This is Nick Walker reporting for InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com on this April 3rd, 2012. We have currently traveled to beautiful Northern California to the college campus of California State University Chico where a Ron Paul rally is being held. The interesting thing about this rally is that it was not along Ron Paul's scheduled stops. The people of this community reached out to the Ron Paul campaign to have this Republican presidential candidate come visit their Northern California town. Here at InfoWars, we have taken the responsibility to cover the media manipulation and blackout that has occurred on Ron Paul's 2012 campaign. And in that responsibility, we have decided to report directly from the front lines, directly from ground zero, to see exactly what the prostitute media does not want you to see along Ron Paul's 2012 campaign trail. Alex Jones, we love you! What is it about Ron Paul's message that intrigues you, man? The uh, ending the war on drugs, definitely the most, and the uh, draconian war that we've had on medical marijuana um, in the state of California has been horrendous. And Ron Paul would be the only presidential candidate who would end that. Right on, man. What do you think about Infowars and Alex Jones? Dude, Alex Jones is the greatest. I've long time listener. I actually have him in my phone. I can listen to him 24 7. Uh, greatest man alive, dude. We love him, dude. He's, he's awesome. Thank you, Alex, dude, if you're, if you're there watching. So. Thank you, man. Thank you, dude. I appreciate it, man. Yeah. Welcome, and thank you for watching. I'm Dan Forant, reporting for InfoWars.com. Today's date is April 5, 2012. Story in the news, because that's the way it is. Roll the tape. An InfoWars.com reader wrote in about a Colorado father whose child goes to school at the Cherry Creek Public School District in western Arapahoe County in Colorado. Here's a small clip from Coney 2012 on what this man's child had to watch. The thing that's really grinding my gears right now uh, is this whole 99%, 1% thing. I watched a documentary the other night on um, Crosby, Stills, and Nash. Now, I'm not really a big fan of their music. I'm more of a Pantera, um, DMX kind of guy. But... Uh, I was watching this documentary, and, and I respect them because they are activists. They, from back in the 60s, they were against the Vietnam War, and now they're against the Afghanistan and Iraqi War. And it was interesting because it was a, it was a long documentary, and they were interviewing different fans, and, and the cool thing about it was they interviewed both sides of the story. This is JB reporting right outside the uh, Barack Obama National Headquarters, Democratic Headquarters in Lancaster County, um, Lebanon County, I'm sorry, folks. Uh, but we have someone here named Vivian who we're going to interview, and it's going to be about Barack Obama. Um, again, we are outside the National Democratic Headquarters for Barack Obama, and we're asking people on the street how they feel about Barack Obama, and we're going to ask them some questions and see if they're really aware of what Barack Obama is actually about. Vivian, come on over. Okay, Vivian, um, first of all, did you vote for Barack Obama last year? No. No, okay. And do you know anything about Barack Obama, or how do you feel about Barack Obama? Uh, I think that he gets more crap than he deserves. He definitely did not have a good stepping stone to start his presidency. Um, I don't believe with some of his beliefs. But... Sure. Okay, well, I'm going to run some things by you, and you tell me how you feel. Um, did you know that Barack Obama spent almost couple million dollars on a law firm in Chicago to block 
access to finding out whether he was a U.S. citizen, and if you didn't know that, how do you feel about that? Ah, uh, seems like something's fishy to me. It does seem like something's <laughs> fishy. Okay, there you go. Also, there was a bill called the NDAA that was signed into legislation recently by Barack Obama. And Barack Obama, which puts people in a position where we can be bagged and tagged and taken to a detention center never to be seen from again. Barack Obama claimed that he didn't want to use this law, but he signed it anyway. Upon doing further research, we found that he indeed wanted that put in and actually specified having it put in. How do you feel about that? Liar, cheater, <laughs> two-timer, yeah. There we go. I'm announcing our biggest contest ever. And we're looking for people who love freedom and who want to be all in, in the resistance to tyrants. So you say you want to fight the new world order. Why, if you were on the radio, if you were Alex Jones, you'd really kick some globalist ass. Well, here's your chance. We're hiring not one, but two new reporters whose reports are going to be on the radio, whose reports are going to be on the nightly news, who will even anchor the show. If you're ready, here's your chance to step into my shoes, and I hope you surpass what I've done. Two winners, $10,000 in prizes, and a shot to be a reporter inside the InfoWars.com command center. We're looking to hire one male reporter and one female reporter. And when you win, you win $5,000. Your video gets seen by hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people on YouTube, and you get put into the very front of the running to be hired as a reporter slash anchor right here in our operation. Do you have what it takes to be the next Info Warrior? The rules are posted below me here and at InfoWars.com. This is a big deal. You know, the globalists are expanding their global empire, but at the same time, the people are waking up all over the world. We've expanded our operations in the last year. We've added the nightly news five nights a week. We're making more special reports. We're reaching 15 million people every week in a year, I want that to be 30 million. This is your chance to join the team. I want to see what you can do. But a big hint is this. Can your news piece make the news? Does it get people's attention? Does it educate people? Does it open minds? That's more important than being beautiful or speaking with perfect eloquence as an orator. All of that is important. But we're looking for people that have that magic spark, that fire of liberty in their heart, because I want you to join our team. I want to give you a launch pad so you can really take off and engage the globalist. And if this works, we'll have contests all the time and we'll continue to build this operation. I'm involved in a talent search, looking for people who have the fires of liberty burning in their hearts and their minds. You've got until April 30th to complete your news report, and then we'll announce the winners one week later. Are you gonna join the info war? Do you have what it takes? It's up to you. All serious entries will be posted on InfoWars.com. So everybody wins. You're getting the message of liberty out, and that's what really matters. But in the final equation, it's not about showing Alex Jones what you got. It's about showing the world and the globalist that no army can stop an idea whose time has come. Join me in the info war. So you say you want to fight the info war. You say you want to go head up against the new world order. You can do a better job than Alex Jones. I know you can. And here's your chance to prove your mettle.